Leave Before You Love Me, Jonas Brothers and Marshmallow. 22 minutes past seven. You're listening to Laurie on BBC Radio Lincolnshire. Now, we're going to talk about something a little bit a little bit out there, I'd say. Um, and I'm just going to introduce the guest because I think he will be able to explain um, what we're going to talk about a little bit more than me. So this is Michael Armstrong. and He is a sole purpose coach. So, Michael, what does that mean? <laughs> Laurie, great to be here. Sole purpose coach, yes. So... Everyone's here for a reason. Um, about 10 years ago, I had this massive spiritual awakening. And after that, I realized that death is a doorway, not the end. And through the research, I've realized that everyone's here for a sole purpose. Oh, gosh. And you, I've, hear, I've heard so many stories about people having these like epiphanies or, you know, realizations. So were you not a believer before that? And then what happened to you to make you, you know, realize that? Well, I grew up Christian. Uh, I grew up in a religious household. Um, so that was just kind of my ideology. And then through a conversation, sober conversation with a friend, all of a sudden this like shining white light was in front. It was like a tunnel. Traveled through it and there was this being there who was translucent, communicating tel telepathically. And it showed me this ball of light. And this was like little water droplets of light coming off of it, splashing back into it. And it's like, this is the source of everything. And all those water droplets are souls. And essentially it was saying death is a doorway, not the end. And I was like, oh my God. And I like zoomed out of it. I look at my friend who I was having this conversation with and he was like, what was that? I was like, wait, you experienced that as well? We both went what? in and uh, right in and out at the same time. Wow. Okay. And what does your friend say about it now? Is he, um, you know, does he believe the same as you? Yeah, so he at the time was atheist. So we, we would always have debates and conversations. And he was trying to convince me that death was like the end. That was it. Nothing happens. You're in the grave. You decompose. Done. And after that, we were both just like mind blown. Like, okay, I've never heard of anything like that in the Bible. Maybe like a burning bush that's talking to you. you know? And he's like, I was like, we just met God. And he's like, no, we can't, we can't call it God. And so we, we referred to this like presence, this thing as it. And that really started me on this quest of just learning and growing. And, and I stumbled onto past life regression hypnotherapy, which is what I talk about on social media now. So do you not, are you now not a Christian? Has that kind of changed your, your view on that? It's almost like I, I don't refer to myself as I don't have, I don't go by any labels. I'm a spiritual being in a human body. Uh -huh. Um, but I think Jesus is dope. You know, I think, I think super, super <laughs> cool dude. Like <laughs> I feel like, yeah, I feel like he's yeah. awesome. Amazing. Okay, so you. So I want to just make sure that I know the the difference. So is reincarnation um, the same as like being born again or living past lives, or are they different meanings? Um, I guess to you. Yeah, pretty much the same thing. Reincarnation kind of comes with a little bit of dogma with different spiritual practices, but essentially past lives. Like we all have had past lives. We've had many different lifetimes. And like when you meet someone in this life and you just have that instant connection and maybe like a soulmate connection, it's because you've known each other in previous lifetimes. And when you meet, it's like, oh, I remember you. Okay, right, Michael, I'm going to play a song, come back to you, because I have just infinite amount of questions to ask you. And I want to get into this a little bit more about sort of past lives and, and whether you can find out a little bit more about it. Um, I've got Bed to Play by Joel Corey and Ray first. It's 26 minutes past seven and you're listening to Laurie on BBC Radio Lincolnshire. I've got a Bed, Joel Corey and Ray. Joel Corey does know how to make some brilliant songs to play on a night out. Good evening, you're listening to Laurie and it's 29 minutes past seven. So on BBC Radio Lincolnshire this evening, we are talking about past lives and whether you can um, you know, get in touch with your past life. And I'd love to know what your thoughts on this topic as well. Michael Armstrong is here, who is a sole purpose coach. Michael, thanks again for being on. So um, Great with your past life, you mentioned that it could be, um, you know, like when you're, you meet somebody and you've got an instant connection with them, they could be like a soul, like a soulmate that you have. So how do you know if you have had a past life? Like just talk us through a little bit about that. Yeah, so it's it's actually uh, something that anyone can can do. There are people who are regressionists, they're hypnotherapists, and they put you into a trance-like state. And while you're in this trance-like state, they can talk with your subconscious mind. So your conscious mind takes a back seat, and the subconscious mind will answer any questions. 
And as these hypnotherapists started doing doing this, they realized they were doing it to go into people's childhood to have them like stop smoking, you know, relieve trauma, that kind of stuff. And people were slipping into past lives. And they were like, well, describe your setting. And they would describe just an entire different time. And they're like, okay, this is a different time frame. So let's fast forward to the very last moment of your life. And they would describe what would happen. So whether someone was Christian, atheist, you know, Jewish, whatever their religious context, as they described the last moment of their life, they would describe everything that happened in between lives exactly the same. Wow. Okay, because I remember watching this program. I was trying to talk to people at work today about it, but they couldn't remember it. And I remember watching this program about this guy who um, had a big phobia of water, and he must have gone, similar to like you said, and got hypnotized to kind of overcome that, uh, that fear that he had, that phobia. And he went back into his past life and he was a sailor and he died at sea and that was kind of correlating with why he had this phobia um yep. is that something that that um happens a lot like something that's you are in your current life is yep. it kind of a yeah, from your past life can that be linked oh yeah definitely so yeah when people have big phobias like that all, all of a sudden they realize that it's this past life trauma perhaps that was how they were killed they were drowned in a past life um there's a lot of people now who are afraid to speak their truth, afraid to like speak their heart, their mind, because perhaps in a past life um, they were killed because, you know, back in the day people were killed for speaking their mind if it went against the church or the state. And so, yeah, that's definitely a thing. Okay. And um, how do people, so, so hip, you know, hypnotism is another way that you can do it. Are there any, uh, are there any other ways? Like, do you have to do that or can you just, you know, come in a dream or, or anything like that? Yeah, I like that one the best because it's yourself, it's your subconscious mind, or some people call it the superconscious mind that's speaking. So to me, that feels most clear. But there are also people like psychic people who can who say they, they can go into past lives. You have to kind of rely on on their honesty with that one. And then with dreams, yeah. And also what's I've been posting on TikTok and I've been talking about this in TikTok and I grew to like two hundred fifty thousand followers in the last like three weeks just talking about past lives. And one of the things that I've been talking about are kids. So kids, when they're from like one to four years old, and I bet there's people listening right now who has a kid at that age, they talk about past lives because for them, the veil has not been fully closed yet. So they still have that connection to the spirit realm. Wow, what, are there any examples that you can tell us about? Any stories? Oh yeah, some of these kids just say the wildest things. Like uh, there was one story about a kid who was like, mom, I wanna go home. And she's like, you are home. And he's like, no. And, and she's like, well, where's home? And he just points up to the stars. <laughs> another, another story of a kid who, uh, they were visiting their grandparents' uh, graves. It was at a, 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 um, a cemetery. And the kid goes, wow, look at all the, these beautiful people in their dresses. And there's just no one around. Um, there are stories of kids who, who their grandparent died like when they were really small. And the kid brings up, oh, this is, th that's grandpa. That picture on the wall is grandpa. Oh yeah, he was the one that always come to my bed and, and comfort me and you know, tell me that he missed me. Things like that. Wow, okay. And um, do you, that must, be, that must be sort of a freaky instinct because like you say, kids don't know what certain things are. So when they say things like that, it can throw you off, can't you, as a parent? Um, <laughs> yeah. I and can there's... imagine that being one of those. The, these these videos that I've been posting, they get hundreds of thousands of views, and I would say there's probably around like twenty thousand comments of people just describing these stories. Wow. So, um, are you the same person? Then? So, uh, you know, say if I've had multiple past lives, am I Laurie as a cave woman, and am I Laurie as a Victorian, or am I a different person every time? Do you think? You're you're the same soul, so you have the same essence but you have different DNA. So your personality is based on your DNA, based on your gender. Um, so if you're a little girl, you're gonna feel and act different than you are if you're like born like a big man, and which you can be two different genders and different lifetimes. One of the trippiest things is souls often incarnate together in multiple lifetimes, but we play different roles. So like your mom in this lifetime might've been your daughter in a previous lifetime. Okay, Michael, I'm going to have to play another song. Come back to you, and I've got a few more questions as well. Because I saw, because I saw you from TikTok. That's how I um, I contacted you because I saw your videos, and I saw one about birthmarks, and it just made me. I've got loads of questions Ooh, about that's that. That's a good so one. 
I'll come back to you in just a second. So it's 25 minutes to eight. You're listening to Laurie on BBC Radio Lincolnshire. And we're talking about past lives, reincarnation, souls this hour. I'll bring you flowers. <laughs> Flowers, Nathan Dorr, JK. It's 22 minutes to eight and we are talking about reincarnation and souls and all sorts of spiritual things with Michael Armstrong. I saw him on TikTok and um, the reason why um, I really wanted to speak to you, Michael, is because when I was younger, so there's eight years difference between myself and my younger brother, and I was adamant when I was eight or nine that you and my little brother had been born before and I can't explain why but I huh. said that to so many people and I couldn't explain why it was just that he used to say things that were like quite clever for his years um but I saw your uh TikTok video about a birthmark so my brother has a birthmark on his um belly button just under his belly button and then it's like the same shape on my on my brother's forehead like it's kind of a scar shape anyway maybe I'm overthinking it but I just wanted to talk to you about birthmark so what's the significance with that yeah, so that, that was one of the first videos that went viral. I, I told a story about a kid in Syria who he was around like three years old and he remembered his past life vividly. He remembers being killed in his past life and he had his mom take him to the small town they had never been to. He's like, that's where I was buried. We have to find my body. And so she brought him there. They ended up finding the body and the little kid had a birthmark on his forehead and in, when they dug up the body, there was a wound on his forehead. That was how he was killed in a previous lifetime. And sometimes birthmarks show up as where they were killed in a previous lifetime. And the trippiest part about this is that he knew who killed him. And he told the townspeople, and that person was still alive. He was older, but he was still alive. They confronted the man, and he just like turned white and confessed to the crime. So, wow. right, I posted that on TikTok. And about three days later, I got a message on Instagram from this woman and she's like, I can't believe that I just saw that on TikTok. That boy that you described was my uncle. And what? yeah, right. I, I'm from Syria. Oh I was like, no way. So I ended up interviewing her on my Instagram and, and chatting about it, which my Instagram and TikTok are both Michael Armstrong 444. Wow. And what, what did she say? She said that, so that was her uncle and actually the person who ended up killing him was his older brother and it was kind of like this family secret uh, but this story it's it's written about in a book uh, I, I don't remember the name of the book but it's I remember re uh, watching it on a TV show in the US and uh, it just intrigued me and so I just remembered the story and I quickly googled it to, to get the details right and and shared about it but she said yeah it was like after that he just went back to being a normal boy and the family kind of like tucked it under the rug a bit. It, it like wasn't a big deal. They, they tried to not make it a big deal to, you know, freak out the kid or, or, or something, yeah. but yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so my brother's birthmark could have something to do with that then if, if it, you know, if he was born again in a past life. Yep, it could have something to do with like perhaps how he was killed in a previous lifetime. Um, yeah, it could be something like that. And a, and a big one about souls, a lot of people, um, if you say that, you know, dogs don't have souls, people get quite upset about that, they're pets. <laughs> With souls, what's your what's your views on that? Uh, well, based on the research of Dr. Michael Newton, and he's regressed uh, past life regression hypnotherapist. He's done over seven thousand people, so he has a lot of studies under his belt. And the the superconscious describes pets as most definitely having souls, um, and they're off. They often do come back to you in multiple different pet bodies and in multiple lifetimes. So pets are essentially like guardians or companions that just are here just to make our our lives better. Michael, thank you so much for coming on and talking to us. I could talk to you all day, but we we have to get off. But yeah, thank you so much for coming on. And if, do you want to shout out your um, social media handles again if people want to find you and find out a little bit more about what you talk about? Yeah, definitely. Um, so Michael Armstrong 444 is on TikTok and on Instagram. Um, and I'm a sole purpose coach. So I, I love to help people find their sole purpose. So Michael Armstrong 444. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Michael. Really enjoyed chatting to you. Thank um, you so much. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> Thank you. That was Michael Armstrong there talking about reincarnation, souls, past lives. If you've got a story as well, maybe you've got a similar story. We shared a lot about kids sharing stories or...